Hmm. This is confusing. Oh, thank goodness. Hey, Charles. What's up? Hey, man. Nothing much. Just wrapping up my day. Do you need anything before I go offline? Well, actually, I was sort of struggling with something, but you know what? It can wait till tomorrow. I've got some time if you want to look at it now. You sure? Yeah, man. What's up? Well, I've been reading up on assembly definitions in Unity, and I'm really struggling to wrap my head around them. Assembly definitions, huh? What made you look into those? Well, actually, you did. Really? Yep. Remember a few weeks ago when you showed me how to use namespaces to organize the code in my Unity project? Yeah, I remember. Well, you mentioned that when my project got big enough, I could use assembly definitions to organize it even more. Oh, that's right. So your project has grown then, huh? It sure has. You want to see? Yeah, sure. Share your screen. All right. One sec. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Wow, you weren't kidding. Your project really has grown. Yep. I've added logic for the UI, some more interactable objects, and a bunch of classes to support all of my game's mechanics. Nice. And every single class belongs to a namespace, just like you showed me. Perfect. So what do you think? Is my project ready for assembly definitions? Well, before I answer that, we should talk about what assembly definitions actually do. That makes sense. Good. Let's start with the assembly. Go ahead and open up that link I just sent you in chat. Okay. Great. So you're going to want to read through this at some point, but in a nutshell, an assembly is a collection of code and resources that gets compiled into either an executable, an exe, or a dynamic link library, a DLL. Okay. So does that mean that all the classes in my project are a part of an assembly? Yep. By default, Unity puts all of your class files into a predefined assembly called assembly-csharp.dll. Wow, I did not know that. Here, switch back to your code editor and we can take a look at it. Okay. And change the explore view from Unity to Solution. See it there? Oh yeah, assembly-csharp. Cool. Now again, Unity automatically creates that assembly for every project but you can define your own assembly with... Ooh, ooh, let me guess. An assembly definition file? Bingo. Cool. But um, why would I do that? Is there something wrong with the one that Unity creates? Oh, no, it's perfectly fine. But there are some advantages to defining your own. Hmm, like what? Well, first of all, you can define more than one. What? Yep. Right now, your whole project lives in a single assembly, so Unity has to recompile the entire code base every time you make a change, even if it's just a small change to one class. That's right. But a few strategically placed assemblies can help break up your code base and speed up compilation by quite a bit. Hmm, that sounds pretty cool and all, but my project compiles pretty fast as is. Well, yeah. The truth is, you don't really notice a change on big projects with hundreds of classes. Gotcha. So. And I guess the answer to my question is that I don't really need to use assembly definitions for my project at all. Not so fast. Assembly definitions are also a great organizational tool. Really? How so? Well, by defining more than one, you can effectively split your project into multiple smaller assemblies that are easier to maintain on their own. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Plus, on top of that, each assembly represents a system boundary that's difficult to cross, which makes it harder to write spaghetti code. Hmm. Interesting. What makes them so hard to cross? Great question. Why don't we add a couple to your project and I'll show you. Sure. That sounds great. Cool. Go ahead and switch over to Unity. Okay. Perfect. So based on the names you've chosen, I'm going to assume that a lot of classes in your project depend on the classes found in your core namespace. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Then we'll start by moving all of your core classes into their own assembly. To do that, go ahead and right click on the core folder, expand the create menu, click on assembly definition, and then just name it core. Beautiful. Okay, so far so good. What's next? Believe it or not, that's all there is to it. Wait, really? But nothing changed. <laughs> Yeah, it may seem that way, but if you go ahead and click on one of those core classes and then check out the assembly information section in the inspector, we can see that now it belongs to the core DLL. Oh wow, you're right. That's awesome. Right? 
That worked out because Unity automatically associates all classes in the same folder and subfolders as an assembly definition file to an assembly with the same name. Oh, okay. So if I wanted to create an assembly for all of my interactables, I just need to add an assembly definition file to the interactables folder? Yep. In fact, why don't you go ahead and do that now? Okay. Nice. Yeah, but uh, wait a second. Looks like there's some exceptions in the console. Ah, uh, yes, those are the result of your new boundaries. Go ahead and open one of those classes up. As you can see, this class depends on being able to reference the iInteractable interface, which now lives in a completely different assembly. Oh, shoot. So what do I do now? Well, first, you'll need to decide if you want to allow your interactables assembly to depend on your core assembly. What if I don't? <laughs> well, then you'll need to redesign your code. But based on what I've seen, I think you're safe. An assembly called core will likely be a dependency of more than a few of your other assemblies. That makes sense. So how do I make it a dependency of this one? It's pretty simple. First, switch back to Unity. OK. Now bring up your interactables assembly definition in the inspector by selecting it in the project window and click on the plus icon underneath the assembly definition references section. This will allow you to add core as a dependency. Go ahead and do that now. OK. Now press apply. And you're all set. Nice. The exceptions are gone. Yep. Now, of course, you're going to want to be careful and be sure to limit the number of dependencies that any one assembly has. Right, because I'm sure that would slow down compilation and pretty much defeat the whole purpose. Exactly. Also, you don't need to add an assembly for every single namespace. That'd be overkill and would make your project much harder to manage. Gotcha. I can see how you can go overboard with these. Oh, yeah. It's important to use these as an organizational tool to define logical boundaries for your code. As long as you keep that in mind, it should be just fine. Awesome. Well, thanks again for all your help. I know you're shutting down, so I'll let you get to it. All right, man, no problem. Hit me up if you need anything else, okay? Will do. Later, man. All right, later. Thank you to all of my supporters, and a special shout out to Dark Rush Photography, Joe Tizol, Nav from Academy of Games, R-Star, Thomas, Trond, Yusuf Ali Castle, Yakub Alasafari, and Iron Alex.